This is a 78 RPM record. The best way of describing one of these is to perhaps say that they're the father of the much more well-known vinyl record. Well, make no mistake, these aren't vinyl records, because put simply, they aren't made out of vinyl, they're made out of shellac. But that's not what this video is about. What's important here is that many of these records are over 100 years old, and yet can still be played on many modern record players. Additionally, 78 RPM was the standard from about the 1910s all the way to the late 1950s. So that's a lifespan of about 50 years, or longer depending on how you want to look at it. When you consider that RPM discs were manufactured even before they were the standard, you can see that they really did have quite a long lifespan. So in case you couldn't tell, in today's video we're going to be talking about planned obsolescence and the consequences that it can have, right now on the Linux Lounge. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining Odyssey, the freedom respecting alternative to YouTube. Links in the description. So, before I start this video, I just want to say, yes, planned obsolescence is a real thing, and I'm going to prove that in today's video. But I also do want to say this for people who maybe take a less cynical view on this sort of thing. Sometimes, planned obsolescence isn't necessarily planned, so much as it's just caused by companies neglecting old products or changing standards for no good reason. I consider both intentional and unnecessary necessary obsolescence to both be extremely bad things. I also want to say that before we get into today's video, that I'm more than well aware that technology moves so quickly these days that some amount of accelerated obsolescence is inevitable. I get that, but not at the rate that we're seeing now. So with all that said, let's get into the video properly. So before I start this video, I just want to say, yes, planned obsolescence is a real thing, and I'm going to prove that in today's video. But I also do want to say this for people who maybe take a less cynical view on this sort of thing. Sometimes planned obsolescence isn't necessarily planned, so much as it's just caused by companies neglecting old products or changing standards for no good reason. I consider both intentional and unnecessary obsolescence to both be extremely bad things. I also want to say that before we in today's video that I'm more than well aware that technology moves so quickly these days that some amount of accelerated obsolescence is inevitable. I get that, but not at the rate that we're seeing now. So with all that said, let's get into the video properly. So to start us off with, I just want to compare the example of 78 RPM records I gave earlier with a more modern music format digital streaming. As I said earlier, 78 RPM records and phonographs had a lifespan of about 50 years, and although there were obviously huge technical advancements during that time, a 78 RPM record made in the early 1900s would still, in theory, play on a phonograph from the 1950s, and the same is true in reverse. You can also still play a record made in the 1900s today, assuming your record player supports the 78 RPM standard, of course, which a surprising amount of players actually still do. Compare this to streaming services and the difference is clear to see. It's pretty obvious that you won't be able to listen to music from a streaming service 100 years down the line, and since music on a streaming service is so closely guarded, it's likely that the music will just become permanently lost. Additionally, a device from just a few years ago, such such as an iPod, cannot use music streaming services in any fashion, which means that once streaming services completely replace traditional digital media files, these devices will be made unnecessarily obsolete after just a decade or two for no good reason, since these devices still play music just fine. Now, it's pretty obvious that in this instance, the obsolescence is caused by companies being greedy. Companies implement DRM which is designed to restrict your usage of the product, which has the unpleasant side effect of reducing the amount of time that a product is available for. It also makes the product incompatible with older devices that don't support the DRM. The same can also be said about other streaming services that distribute movies, games, books and other forms of media, which is one of the many reasons why we need to fight DRM. If we want our media to be enjoyable and accessible for generations to come, we need to say no to DRM. Now some people might ask, how exactly is any of this a problem? Can't you just buy new products to experience a new media and throw out the old products? Well, 
Maybe I just don't want to. But in all seriousness though, this is a very real problem. Some people just don't want to buy new products constantly to experience new media, and they really shouldn't have to. Constantly having to buy new products is creating a massive amount of electronic waste, which is completely unnecessary when the old products still work absolutely fine. Additionally, it tends to be the most marginalized groups who can't afford to buy the new products, which leaves them further alienated from society. As well as the immediate consequences to planned obsolescence and obnoxious DRM, I also think that we're setting ourselves up for some serious issues in the long run. I am someone who believes that media archival is incredibly important, and one look at sites like the Lost Media Wiki would seem to suggest that a lot of people agree. As a society, do we really want all of our art-related accomplishments to be lost when Spotify and Netflix and other companies like that inevitably go broke or lose their rights to a large chunk of their library? I think that most people would probably say no, which is why we need to insist on only having DRM-free media and not changing standards unless there's a huge technical advantage in doing so. So in conclusion, I know that this video has largely been talking about music, but you could apply this to pretty much any form of media or really any tech product, and I have to say that what we've talked about today is something that's really dangerous. As a society, we need to start insisting on DRM-free media that is backwards compatible where possible. We need to do this so that the more disadvantaged people in our society, as well as future generations for that matter, will have access to the media that is being produced. But with all of that said, I hope you enjoyed my ramble about DRM and obsolescence. If you enjoyed it, be sure to stay tuned for the next video. But with that said, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.